Hello everybody, this is Dren608. <clears throat> I'm going to try and do something a little different. We're going to try and do a playthrough of Pathfinder Kingmaker. It's available on Steam. Uh, Alcat Games was the developer, Deep Silver is the publisher, and a whole slew of other people have credits. Uh, I strongly suggest you go into the credits thing and scroll through here to see all the people that made this thing possible. Uh, for instance, there's Alcat, uh, Pathfinder IP, and Publisher. So, <clears throat> I have played this game for a while. Um, I wanted to figure out how all the interface and things work. Get some idea of the storylines and things like that. So I've played through several of the chapters. I have made massive amounts of mistakes in playing those chapters. I did a bunch of tinkering with levels and splash of this and splash of that I decided that I would try and start up a new game and this time I'm going to be very very narrow in my in my choices um, as I get companions and whatnot I'm going to pick a class whatever class they start up in I'm gonna let them stay in their class and just see how high a level I can make them get to and see if that works any better than what I did before <laughs> we'll see um, if you like what you see in this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you really like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Um, boy, that music's getting a little loud, isn't it? I have to do something about that. Um, I'm going to go uh, try and tone down the music here. Uh, music, music, where's music? Let's, uh, yeah, let's put the music down here around 30-something. So you can actually hear myself think. Okay. Um, so anyway, we are going to, this is going to be sort of the, the setup. So we're going to go into a new game. Uh, yeah. We're going to do the main storyline. We're going to go into a new game. Um, this is where we, uh, choose I've been leaving that at normal I like having death store that way your people don't uh, I turn off the auto level up because I like to have uh, uh, some control over this over what I'm going to have my characters do and my companions um, I'm going to leave the damage to the party at normal Enemy difficult is normal. Uh, 1.0. Uh, I do like having to be able having to wait, do my weight management. I am going to leave on the retrain of your characters. Um, I turn off these two things here, uh, which are only active companions and skill user receives uh, the experience. It will dilute the experience points to everyone a little bit, but um, definitely will be, um, it's easier to manage in the long term. Um, now, un under kingdom management, I'm not sure, I'm not very good with kingdom management. So I'm actually going to take that down a peg, I think. I tried it on normal when I was trying to, to figure it out, and that was a mistake. So I'm going to actually take the kingdom management down to easy, just so that I can try and advance the story a little faster than having to worry about every little kingdom management thing. You can put it on auto if you just want to do the adventuring and just let the computer uh, manage everything for you. That's a little scary sometimes because it may do things that you don't want it to. And I definitely don't want to try hard until I've played this game like a couple of thousand hours because this there's a lot that goes on in here. Right, so we're going to leave it at easy. Um, and I think we will... go forward. 
Okay. So they give you some pre-built uh, characters if you want to. Um, I'm going to start with a new character. So first thing we do is we have to pick pictures. They have all sorts of really interesting pictures for people. Um, a lot of these pictures are actually people that you will meet. So you have to kind of be careful on what you pick. Um, I tend to go with this one, which was uh, in the previous screen here. I think that's Hedwig. Is that? Yes, I know. Yeah, that's the Hedwig picture, so that's the one I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this picture for my guy. I don't use a mace or a flail like that <coughs> myself, but... Uh, so we're going to go forward. Now, first thing, I'm very, very partial to half-elves. So I almost always, when I'm starting off a game, I like to, uh, that's D&D based. Half-elves to me are the most uh, versatile. Uh, I'm not sure about these body types. Well, I don't want to be skinny. So that's about average. Uh, face. Yeah, definitely not that one. Um, I think we'll go with four. Hairstyle. I don't get a lot of choices in hairstyles here. Be a shaggy person. Ponytail. Locks. Uh, okay. And bald. Well, we're not going to go with bald. That looks almost like a mullet. So, the character I'm trying to go for, so I can tell you right now where I'm going to end up going. <coughs> Half elves are really a notorious. We can have a little goatee or no beard at all. So, we have to go with the no beard. Um, I think I'm going to go with this hairstyle uh, because I am headed for. Um, a ranger. So now I can change the hair color. I like dark gray like that. Um, the ranger I'm going to try and build is a cross between uh, Ranger's Apprentice, uh, which is a novel, series of novels, and uh, Aragorn from The Lord of the Rings. So I'm trying to kind of combine the two in what I'm trying to build. Uh, we'll see how well that works out. So here we go. Now I get to choose what I want to do. And as I said, I want to be a ranger. I have a, I would like to try to play a paladin someday. But uh, not for this playthrough. We're going to go with a ranger. And now you can have your standard ranger. Okay. Or you can be one of these other things. A freebrooder is uh, basically your natural leader and a pirate. A uh, flame warden is... Uh, Say Blazing Phoenix, uh, burning away corruption, evil, and those who cling to decay. The one that really intrigues me is the Stormwalker. Rangers who walk in the Tempest unafraid draw the power from the storm into themselves and become Stormwalker. So I'm going to go with the Stormwalker. Uh, you get some. When you get up higher level, you actually can uh, have lightning on your on your bows and weapons, so it's kind of interesting. All rangers get favored terrain at third level and then every four levels thereafter. Favored terrain gives you a plus two on your uh, initiative checks, lore, nature, perception, and, stilt and stealth checks, so that's kind of important. Um, now, uh, the Stormwalker automatically starts off as a bowman. And so you'll get these extra bow levels. So you basically are getting extra archery um, skills. Uh, 
and you also will start with a favorite enemy. So, I'm trying to remember how this works. And Ranger proficiencies. Your simple and martial weapons, light and medium armor, and you can use a shield except a tower shield, which is fine. So, we're going to take that. Now here's where you get to add in points to your base scores. Everything starts at 10, okay? So one of the things that, and you get four skill points. Now, you can only have one point in each, so I'm gonna take Persuasion. Perception always sounds like a good idea. I'm a Ranger, so I should have Lord Nature. And then one of these others, uh, I usually start off with Athletic. I think that's a better move. Okay. Now, you're going to get... You, f you assign these points, and then you get to do your racial bonus on top of it. Okay? So, um, I'm going to be an archer, so I want to have... a good dex. Uh, definitely need to have hit points. I have to be semi-intelligent, semi-wise. And I go for a high charisma. The reason why is, you'll notice over here on persuasion, I now have a plus six on my persuasion. I'm going to be a ruler, supposedly. I'm going to try and make myself a king. I figure I'm going to need persuasion, like, out the wazoo, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Um, wisdom is also important because of these lore checks. The intelligence, you see the things highlighted over here? They highlight what they're, what the stat is good for. So one thing I want to make sure is I have at least a halfway decent strength. And I'm thinking I want to add to my lore... Now I only have one point left, so I have to put something at an odd number. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it to my strength, because then one point, I can either put it in my strength or put it in my charisma, which would help me with the whole persuasion thing. At a certain point, as you go up levels, you'll get a free, you'll get an ability point to add. So you have to try and figure out what you're going to need. The reason why I put it in strength is it helps you in the long run to get, um, be able to carry stuff. Now, you see I got more ability points here? That's because I raised my intelligence. If you raise your intelligence up, you get extra points. So now I have an extra point to spend over here. Uh, and I'm thinking I'm going to put it in stealth. Because again, I'm a ranger, I like to sneak around in the woods. Right? Okay. Now you get a racial bonus. Uh, that's what this bar is down here. You can add it to strength. Or to dex or to con, or to intelligence. Uh, like if you added it to intelligence. Wisdom and charisma. Now I could go for charisma and get a ridiculous persuasion, but I think that's a little overkill. I think what I really want to be is a really good archer. So I'm going to put it in my dex and make myself be a plus three there for the modifier. Now you go to the next screen, and this is where you have to pick your abilities. You get a favorite enemy, a feat, because that's from your bonus thing, and uh, half elves get a skill focus as a bonus feat. So skill focus, I'm going to take, again, I'm going to become a king, so I'm just going to go ahead and take skill focus and persuasion. So that gives you uh, an extra plus three on uh, checks involving persuasion. Persuasion is not only, it's uh, bluffing, uh, diplomacy, and intimidation. So it helps you in all those types of things. Now you get a feat. Um, you could take a weapon focus. But um, the thing that I like is point blank shot because you get an extra plus one with your bow at relatively short range. Your bow goes out to like, depending on the bow you have, you can go out to like 40, 50 feet maybe. 
Uh, this lets you, if enemies are getting close, it gives you a plus one to hit them. And damage. And the damage is the important part, too. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take point blank shot. Now I get a favorite an enemy. And this took me a little while to figure out. And what you really want is giant humanoids. I originally thought monstrous humanoids, but I really want giant humanoids to start with. Um, there's lots of different enemies. Uh, you're going to run into fey, you're going to run into goblins, you're going to run into humans all the time. Um, you will run into magical beasts. You will run into outsiders. It's a type of monster. Uh, reptilian humanoids, plants. Vermin are cute. Vermin is like uh, kobolds and rat men and stuff like that. Undead doesn't really help me with a bow. Uh, enemy plants. Yes, there are plant enemies. Uh, and then I always like this one. Favorite enemy, halflings. So you can beat up the halflings of the world. Or gnomes. But uh, I think that's kind of cute. I guess if you're evil, you would do that. Uh, you want to go after dragons, you can you know, become a dragon slayer, I guess. Animals, you will run into a lot of animals, so that's not necessarily... You will run into constructs or like golems and things. Um, aberrations are just sort of a collection of really weird monsters. Um, giant humanoids, uh, that usually includes things like frost giants and stuff like that. So, um, it's usually a good, good pick to start off with. Okay, so that's where we start. That's all we've got. So we've got our plus one for attack and damage, and we are um, plus three on all our persuasion checks. Okay, this right here is favorite enemy, so you know I get a plus two on attack and damage rolls against giant humanoids. We'll see how many of those we run into. Probably at first level, I'm not going to run into many, but I want to make sure I have it, just in case I do. And that's all we get there. Now this is, uh, you know, you can let us be off. Hear all these strange. A solid plan. All this waiting bores me. <laughs> we will be victorious. Yeah, right. So it comes to this. I don't know why. Why wise sounds like a grumpy dwarf to me. I'm not touching that. And grumpy's even grumpier. Uh, none doesn't give you any... You don't say anything out loud. Uh, Madman. I see his blackness. <laughs> Our time has come. Uh, Pious is one if I was playing a, 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 a paladin, I probably would take Pious. Um, this will hurt! <laughs> Some of these, some of these are just hilarious. Someone else would make better use of this. Let's hear you cry. Enemy near. Well, I'm gonna be a king, so I guess I'll go with reserved. Oh, my birthday. Uh, let's see. Let's pick a day. Far into the future. Sixteenth uh, of. Uh, how about the ninth? Rova. That sounds like a good one. All right. So that's where we're at. Now you got to pick your alignment. Um. Oh, enter the name. Uh, let's just go with Dren608. The, the computer doesn't try to pronounce your name. It will like, I will go with, and then there's a blank, or they say this man, or if you were female, probably would say this woman. You can decide that. Um, I'm just putting in my, my handle name here, Dren608, so that we know what we're doing. So, yes, I'm the 608th clone of Dren. So, there we go. Now, as far as alignments go... Being a ranger, you have to be some sort of good. You can't pick these evils, okay? And you can be one off, I think. I think I can be chaotic and lawful. But basically, these are the three you want to pick for a ranger. And I'm going to take neutral good. That lets me do some chaotic actions, some lawful actions, maybe even the odd neutral evil action, which would slide me straight down and then do a neutral good to bring it right back up. You do not want to switch alignments because things happen to you, okay? So it tells you here kind of what they are. Uh, evil characters to base or destroy it. Good characters protect innocent life. Uh, lawful characters tell the truth, keep their word. Judge those who fall short of their duties. Char chaotic characters follow their conscience, resent being told what to do, favor new ideas over tradition, and keep their promises only if they feel like it. 
So if you go neutral good, it's like, okay, I'm going to protect innocent lives, but I'm not tied to every law of the land, and I'm open to freedom choices from chaotic. So I'm going to take neutral good. This is also when I'm playing my first D&D uh, &D games um, 40 some odd years ago. Yes, I have the original three pamphlets of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, neutral good always seemed like the, the most versatile in that you weren't worried about shifting too much because in general you would play good. Um, the next one for me usually was chaotic good and I very rarely played lawful good unless I was like a paladin. Um, I could play lawful neutral sometimes. Uh, my favorite evil one was always lawful evil and I would play an assassin as a lawful evil so there's rules to who I can kill and so on. But I'm not playing any of those things. I'm playing a ranger so I figured neutral good is probably a good place to go. Gives me some flexibility in my kingdom because I can kind of shift you know, sideways a little bit. If I need to make a lawful action good, if I need to make a chaotic action good, um, I can balance those to keep me in the good range, you know, in the neutral range there. And, if, you know, just making generally good choices will keep me up in this in this arc up here. So I shouldn't have any alignment problems going down the way. So now we're going to go forward. Now, when we go forward here, I believe we go into the immediately the first cutscene. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And... Get through I the initial faint. quest. I feel faint. Why do I feel faint? Am I tired already? Okay, so this is sort of an overview of my character. I have lots of at least plus ones everywhere. Okay. Um, you can see that my persuasion is really high. My perception isn't bad. Maybe just my stealth. My trickery. Although it says plus three, I can't actually use it until I put a point in there. Same thing with use magic device, mobility. You have to have at least one point in the in the things to make it actually usable. So that's something to keep track of. Um, so I have all these things. Here's my armor class, 13, whatever. Um, skills. Abilities. So this kind of shows you your abilities that you did. Any spells that you would have, which you don't get them as a first level. Character is this thing. And in total, it's this time. thing. Okay. So we say that we're done. I'm only a plus one on my base attack bonus. Um, if we go complete, I think we now go into the initial cuts. If you are over encumbered and not a random encounter map, you can drop some items and come back later to pick them up. Something to remember. Uh, I do have the tutorial things on. I may turn them off later because they'll just get annoying after a while. Our story started at the mansion ah. of an Aldori sword lord. Drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward, heroes of all stripes gathered here. So I hope you got to hear that. That is Lindsay, our bard who will be telling our story for good or ill. Yes, we do go to this cutscene. Where are they? This is taking forever. There's my girl, Amiri. Before, just that the Aldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Aldori anyway? Rich folk? <laughs> I just love Amiri. I just love her attitude. If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever hole you crawled out of. The Aldori Sword Lords run the premier school for the dueling arts. They're also the richest and most influential group in this part of Brevor. Take that tone with them, and they'll teach you some manners pretty quickly. Good old Tartuccio. You will find out that you come to detest Tartuccio. All right, you purple toad, just <laughs> shut your trap. <laughs> purple if toad, you can't, I love it. I'll help you. Yeah. Obviously, Amiri and Tartuccio are not getting Hush. along. There's Lindsay. She's our hobbit bard. Halfling, I guess, bard in... Uh, she's recording the story one way or another. She's the one that uh, always tells you what's going on and stuff. And then everybody starts wandering around. And in comes... The boss people. And yes, you have to watch them walk up here. And Greetings, everyone. I 
am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori. And this is Lord Mayor Yosef Selenius of Restal. I'm not sure if Jamandi's an elf or a half elf. Can't really tell. And then Lord Mayor Joseph. Okay. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, okay. strong and fearless. Exactly what Restov needs. All right. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, now to, to the, the point. point. South of here, just beyond Brevois' border, lies a region known as the Stolen Land. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the stolen okay. lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restoff would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state as well as the noble title of its founder. Okay, so the prize is to become the Baron. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head. And you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any, Any questions? questions? Okay. So, uh, got a whole bunch of questions here. Um, notice that one is missing. I have feeling that one is uh, specifically for a, um, a type of alignment that I am not. Sometimes you won't get choices. That's something to remember. Whatever alignment you choose, also limits some of the choices that you will have as you go forward. So sometimes you can't do things. So if you go look at a guide and it says, oh, you can do this, this, or this, and you get in the game and all of a sudden you only have two of those choices, not three, that's usually because your alignment precluded one of the choices to be available. So uh, let's just go down the list. What do you say? There's a whole team of us. Who exactly will receive the Baron's title? I will, of course. I'm yeah, the see? Leader of see what I mean? You don't like all. him. <laughs> don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help you. Good old Tartuccio. Jumps right in there. We haven't yet begun, and you already Hurry. speak of divvying rewards. <laughs> what makes you think we'll even succeed? Uh, There's the no end of the point arguing yeah. over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. Okay, Harim is a dwarf, uh, and he's like the doom and gloom cleric. It's kind of hilarious to have him in your party because he's always making statements like that. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. Okay. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Okay. That doesn't sound like a good idea, but okay. All right, let's ask the stupid question. That's a good point. Oh. As I see it, this fail. lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? She is an elf. Uh, I see the really pointed ears. Those are not horns. Those are actually her ears. Um, Jethael is interesting. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you that don't know. Uh, you'll find out about her in the future. <laughs> I think she's an interesting Perhaps character as well. because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> that's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. Okay, that doesn't sound good. When you start saying things like that, that usually means somebody's going to come and get you. <laughs> okay, you're helping us found a barony. What do you gain from such generosity? That's... Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around or whatever it is you do. And take my bow and wrap it around your head. Of course we stand to benefit from this enterprise. 
But if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, well, please know that these concerns are unfounded. I don't believe you. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with, not bandit gangs and monster hordes. I don't believe her. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody starts offering you a barony, their strings attached. They just what haven't told you that anything. smell in the air? Ooh. Can I see? Is it the smell of unspoken words and political intrigue? Okay. What? She's a tiefling. Okay. See the horns there? That makes her a tiefling and the, the burny eyes and oh boy. Uh, yeah, she's kind of scary. <laughs> and she's winking at me. So, uh-oh. Uh... -oh. uh what rewards can we expect exactly? Oh, let's ask stupid and what questions. what reward would you seek beyond a noble title and your own lands? We'll absorb the costs of preparing and equipping your expeditions. Once you return victorious, Restoff will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. Still, it's gotta be, there's got to be strings attached. Words, words, it's words. Work. <laughs> Significant. Financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. <laughs> Good old Amiri. Of course. There will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Rostov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Okay. So, food. Now you're talking. All right. I think we can say that that's as clear as day, right? Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying I to don't trust call. this guy. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage. The Pretty words. The will that distinguishes true heroes. I look, look at, at you, you, O champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second oh dear. that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go, and return in triumph. I don't like people who use all them pretty words. Now one thing you can do is you can scroll back up through this whole thing. If you think you missed something, you can scroll back through the, through the dialogue and see what's going on. Essentially, it sounds like Tartuccio wants to take over the group, and uh, the Sword Lords and this and this Mayor, they're talking pretty words, but I got a feeling that there's going to be strings attached whether I like it or not. So let's end the dialogue and see what happens. A whole bunch of people start walking away. Hi, my name's Lindsay. I'm a bard, though this is my first real adventure. So... Shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? Uh, well, let's, uh, let's do the pleased to meet you. Likewise. Actually, I also wanted to ask you something. Uh-oh. Curious little Lindsay. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious, personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown, or whatever it is Barons wear. It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This, this is the person I'll write my book about. Wait, a book? Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. <laughs> okay. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic journey lying before us. Who's going to be the hero? Some dwarf who keeps muttering about how we'll all die? Or maybe that horrific scythe lady? Or, God forbid, Tartuccio? No way.
Well, let's ask her about the barbarian. Oh yeah, she's fantastic. You can tell she could tear a bear's head off with her bare hands, but she kind of scares me just a little. <laughs> but I mean, her sword's twice as big as I am. She could cut me down without even noticing. Just think on it a bit, all right? I'm sure you'll agree. All right, I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning. Okay, so we're done talking to Lindsay. Uh, first step on the road to glory. Okay, so Lindsay walks away. We can talk to Jathale. She doesn't like being used as a pawn. Amiri. Can't wait to set out. Tartuccio. We've got an adventurer here. Okay, these adventurers are all way overconfident. There's an adventurer. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of... Not a whole lot of people left to... Uh, to talk to here. Looks like everybody's heading off to their rooms. Okay, now I do know because I have played this before that um, wander down here. Okay, so uh, this is the area exit. Oh, there's Casey. We can go talk to Casey. She doesn't say anything think. Okay. That's just some adventurer walking out. So I do know, um, I'm going to put a stop in here. Um, I do know that here is, <coughs> when you go into here, it starts the next part of the adventure like immediately. So I'm going to stop here and then we'll go into there in the next episode. Okay. So let me stop this. Uh, I'm Jen608. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up button. If you really like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notify button, then you'll be notified when I upload another video or when I do another stream. Um, I Most of my channel is strategy-type war games. Um, this is me trying to branch out into something else. I really was intrigued by this game, and I thought, uh, let's see what it looks like if you don't, uh, if you don't try and game the system and use levels of this and that and the other uh, things and everybody just kind of stays in their class. So we'll see how that works out. All right. So until next time, stay safe and bye bye.